number four, we have our players locked in. For DePaul, it will be Skull Kid, and for Niagara, it will be Tin Can. Uh, I am... No, I, I, I don't recognize these players. I, I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah. I, I know they've, they've played before, but it has been a, a long time since I have seen uh, Tin Can play. And Skull Kid, he is uh, fairly consistent on this DePaul roster. So I, I feel like I, I'm seeing another two stock coming our way. Because sure. <laughs> two stock, two stock, you know, anything is possible. So if anybody, if any... Uh, lovely audience members in chat would like to help us out with who they play. That would be Skull. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Skull Kid plays Ness. Oh boy. So this is this is a little bit of my home to if I can definitely talk about that a little bit. Still would not be able to tell you who Tin Can plays, and just like that they've already been. Oh, Sephiroth. Interesting. So uh, with this with Ness Sephiroth, like the best thing that you want to do is go to a stage that's not too big. One where you don't give them too much space, so Smashville is going to be ideal here. Uh, that's probably the best pick. As soon as you let, you know, Sephiroth move around Ness, because he has much better mobility, he has much better speed, he has much longer dish joints and buttons. Um, it's not to say it's a difficult matchup, but the best thing that you can do for yourself is limit the amount of space that Sephiroth has to run away. So going to Smashville is going to be really, really big, but the biggest issue for the Ness here is going to be landing, because you're landing on one place, and that's the sign of the platform. And man, does Sephiroth have the buttons to be able to cover that? Yeah, Sephiroth with you know, an absurd amount of range uh, and you know that t whole tipper mechanic. Uh, as well is going to mean that that you're absolutely right. Ness is going to have trouble landing, but we will have to see how these two players play it out. Uh, the last time we've only seen one or two Sephiroths on stream before since this character uh, has been released, and I believe the one time Sephiroth was on stream, he lost the set. So we'll see if uh, this is uh, Tin Can can rewrite that. Yeah, so the best thing for Skull Kid here is like, you really gotta be able to catch a lot of Sephiroth jumps, try to go through those follow-ups. Was able to get the double forwarder already right off the bat, tries to go through the two frame with PK Fire, not able to find it quite yet, but if they did, it's, it's like a very low risk, high reward option, because if you miss it, you know, you can just look and see your ledge trap. If you get it, you can spike them and kill them. Uh, so right now, you know, you know, PK Thunder is going to be a huge tool against Sephiroth offstage. It's able to go through up B so well. Um, it's one of the only ways to consistently actually, um, you know, pressure uh, Sephiroth offstage like that. Ooh, that was a greedy forward smash, but that was big too for shield pressure. But the back air coming through for Skull Kid means the first stock goes to DePaul. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh... Sephiroth is so like that he's just gonna be really dying at any piece. And after 95 against Ness, that's gonna be a whiff double jump, but Skull Kid mixing up the movements so well. Tin Can was anticipating like a neutral air dodge back into the corner. Um, and at that point, just like a 50 50 positioning yourself better and being able to react. Skull Kid that time respecting the down smash really good, able to live on a little bit longer, getting a couple of pummels. And now, ooh, is that gonna be the follow up? It is the PK Thunder into the up air. Nothing that Tin Can could have done about that other than don't, don't get hit. Yeah, really smart reaction too to recognize that Sephiroth had kind of pinned himself to the stage there and the recognition of the knockback uh, being able to fall right into that up air uh, was massive and now dipping really low. That's yeah. going to be a three stock from Skull Kid. Oh my god, the Paul University is just on top of it, but honestly, Skull Kid played that matchup ideally. They played it clean, they played it solid, they didn't overextend, they went through consistent follow-ups, uh, and they did exactly what Ness does best in this matchup, and that's get those edge guards. So take a look at this, this is a bit of a tail whip here, right? So uh, Sephiroth was just sort of scared to go in that deep, I don't think the actual PK Thunder connected, but Tin Can was just so afraid of um, you know, either the tail hitbox or the head hitbox itself, that they were forced to go deep. There was very little that they could have done in that situation other than try to hold on to a jump and hope they don't get sent further off stage. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, it, you you summed it up. Skull Kid was all over this matchup, played it really well. Uh, and uh, with that, we see our first three stock of the day, uh, it, rather than a two stock. So. Uh, DePaul looking extremely clean, and uh, I also 
uh, realize, if you look at the standings, DePaul is actually second in the EGF. They were only, uh, via tiebreaker, they were only three points away from being our number one seed. So they, you know, Niagara had a tall gosh. challenge. Yeah. Ni <laughs> they're, they're on top of it, man. Look how strong they're looking this season. Is this... Okay, I think it is entirely possible that they will be able to take this entire set without losing a single point, uh, which would be kind of nuts and so good for them. Play their statistics overall. It so. would not. It would not surprise me. It wouldn't be the first time that we would have seen, uh, you know, a shutout on stream. But it, I mean, to not get a single point, it, you know, for those uh, unfamiliar with the whole standings, uh, we do, you know, record tie uh, and then head to head, and then the last tiebreaker is that point differential. So however much you win by, uh, that just gets accumulated over the season, and. So to have to, to win by this massive of a margin, that's a huge uh, positive in your point differential. So DePaul, you know, if they crush this team and say Siena, the number one seed, you know, only wins by, you know, a couple points, a handful of points here or there, DePaul would skyrocket themselves into first place. Uh, I mean, this edge guard right now, this pressure from Skull Kid is so good. That time they were able to get one of the hits of the tail. Once again, sending Tin Can back off stage, fishing a little bit too much. Boiling that back to with a whole lot of buttons, but Tin Can not able to get any punishes quite yet. Finally, getting a little bit of damage for themselves. That back to nowhere close to the edge of the stage. Uh, Skull Kid definitely got a little bit greedy with it, but you know what? Stage control is stage control. Only 25% racked up on Skull Kid right now for Tin Can. Meanwhile, 126. That dash yeah. attack is gonna do it That's too. Funny. Dash attack is funny. I think I think that move is genuinely hilarious. It's it's disjointed. It, it kills. It's not. It's kind of fast. It can cross up shields. Uh, the dash attack buff was so unnecessary, and man, it just pays off so often when you don't expect it to. Uh, right now, Fiction is just struggling to get back, oh, excuse me, Tin Can is struggling to get back onto the stage. Once again, connecting a PK Thunder, getting another one. Um, Skull Kid at that point just respecting the fact that they weren't plus enough and dashing right into that F Smash. You have to remember just how big that move is. Yeah, that was uh, a, a little misplay there from Skull Kid, but regardless, Tin Can will take it. Now at 128, and it just feels like Tin Can has not been able to to find a way in or out of this corner. Wow, uh, just about to look at the next kit. Hit from Skull Kid is going to be able to take the neutral in the back. Here. There it is. Two stocks to one. Skull Kid with all the momentum in the world. Really nothing to lose at this point with the way that they're playing. Um, able to once again just connect the double four leader. Uh, with the way that they spaced that third one, they were looking to try to catch another jump. They weren't able to find it uh, right now. Uh, wow. Like, they're just not getting hit. They're picking all the right buttons. And um, it seems as though Tin Can just can't find an option for it. Yeah, really good spacing from, from Skull Kid. You're absolutely right. His ability to just weave in and out and around these hits. And the drop down back air gets the strong wow. hitbox. And just like that, DePaul with another solid Seven two stock. Points. Seven points. A three stock in the beginning and another two points now. Wow. DePaul is looking so clean right now. And the only reason that that back air was able to connect was because... Had Tin Can gone for a move that would actually hit Ness in his shield, he would be stuck in enough shield stun. But look at the way that that F smash actually just completely whiffed uh, in in Ness's face. Like that was wow. That was that was definitely something. Honestly, really unfortunate. Yeah, uh, and again, it, it kind of felt at some point like Tin Can was was swinging for the fences, just kind of hoping something would connect, especially on that last stock, and it just allowed Skull Kid to find his openings, rack up that damage, and then eventually end it with that strong hit of back air. But really good stuff to Skull Kid, uh, you know, cementing this massive lead uh, and, and really, you know, widening that margin uh, uh, is going to be super helpful for them down the line in terms of their standing. So here's another look at that back air. Yeah, the strong hitbox connecting tw uh, for two stocks in total uh, in this match. And uh, I mean, just like that, you know, how, how many how many times can we sing the praises of DePaul because they have just been all over this set? 